this is Sarah from Sarayup.com, Facebook, the numbers queen, and Instagram, Sarayup1111, with our hot astrology tips for 2025 with the one and only Tiani. Welcome. Thank you. So excited to be here. So I know people are concerned for the welfare of 2025, and we haven't even got it in the room yet. Mm. Um, I was wondering if you could just introduce, we were talking just now about how it's a different start to the year if we could just Mm. maybe go from there yeah for sure um thank you for inviting me back I always love talking to you um yes so uh, you know the first little portion of the of the year is quite dynamic but also slow you know we're entering 2025 with Mars Uranus and Jupiter all retrograde but the fact that Mars is retrograde Mars is the planet of energy and action and motivation and wanting to initiate something new so I want to just you know tend to everyone here and say you know if you're not feeling like all of those pistons are firing come January because January is a one month numerology we're actually numerologically going through January's a one, February's a 11, two, you know, March is a three. So we're going in order, which is quite synchronistic here. This doesn't happen all the time. So we're starting with a one and a waxing moon. Yay, yay, yay. But Mars is retrograde. So it's going to feel very clunky. It's going to feel emotional. We're going to, you know, still it's, it's going to be slow. And I think that there's a real big lesson if I can say all of 2025 is to slow down because it's not all isn't as it seems. A lot of planets are in and out of of signs, you know, and so it's like I've been calling 2025 very numinous, the space in between. It's very liminal. You think, you know, you're not here anymore, but you're also not there. So where are you then? And and that's sort of going to be the feel of all of 2025, like in general. Yeah, it's, you know, nine for me is very mysterious. And it's very much bigger than us and there's a lot that is we will never know because maybe for our own highest good because we just go in circles if we knew. I feel like the number one month is always about the birth process and I feel like when you're birthing a special baby, the labour is different. It's not just uh, get it out. Mm-hmm. It's also sort of just have a whole child and mm-hmm. set, set it up from the start as this very holistic experience. So I feel like we're being prepared for like a universal energy where people are more um, expressed. It's probably Mm. the word I get. I feel like a lot of us still hide a lot of our character and our achievements and our abilities, especially spiritually. Mm. And so this is more than coming out of the closet. You know, this Mm. is like showing off the, the inner palace. Yeah. Um, so yeah, well, I guess we're coming at it from those slightly different angles, but there's so much beautiful commonality with astrology and numerology. Absolutely. They're both magic, you know, they're both magical resources to to work with and to pull on. And I I, I do believe and feel that about the one as well. Often people are in their one personal year, perhaps, or you know, it's a one collective year and they're like, Yeah, all these new things. It's like, no, you're only at the base. You are just putting the seeds in, like it's only the fertile time. And so January is it's a fertile month because Mars will move back into Cancer in his retrograde phase where he spends most of his retrograde. So, again, we're back into the womb. We're back into the waters. We're back into the emotions. Mm-hmm. But, again, often, you know, people want to go, yay, like let's start a new year, Gregorian-wise, yeah. because, of course, there's many different beginnings. We've got the Chinese, the, the, lunar, the lunar year, which starts actually January the 29th next year. That begins the Chinese New Year. We've got the Astrological New Year, which begins at the end of March. But the whole first quarter of the year is quite dynamic even if it's a whole lot of going over things slowing down reassessing reworking birthing fertility you know and it's not that we can't achieve great things in this year but also we are like you said in the collective nine there is a big mystery and we both shared just before we we hit record before Sarah hit record that both of us like giving our yearly overviews I mean I you know I write my kit and we'll chat about my kit but you know I write this early in in each year and and I was you know I was really marinating for over a month on just some certain things that needed to come through and it took a lot longer than I thought that that it would to come through because there is quite a lot of mystery and magic in Mm -hmm. next year and you know we've got to really uh, 
the, the biggest words of this surrender and letting go and allowing yeah. in this year, that's, you know, let go of control. If you're a hustle, forceful sort of A type mm -hmm. person, perhaps it might be quite difficult because there's going to be a lot of shedding, a lot of, you know, it's, it's the year of the snake, <laughs> you know, you're shedding some skins, you are letting go of everything you maybe have ever known about yourself and life in general. Absolutely. And actually that concept of nudity, nakedness, returning to the Garden of Eden, that's been coming up a lot in, in the readings and classes I'm doing. And oh. for me, nine is always about rewriting history. Mm. And I think sometimes when we rewrite history, we just copy paste yeah. the last 10 pages over again. <laughs> we, don't Not really, next year, though. we don't really make that effort to innovate. And I think that's the invitation of next year. And I don't think it's all pre-written. I feel, I feel like next year particularly there's a lot of like blanks that we can fill in and so I feel like it's very much about intention attitude presence and I know that doesn't come naturally to a lot of people but this would be the year um, yeah to cultivate like I said that sort of that interior patience because um, I, I feel like it'll be well rewarded basically. Yeah, interior patience. I love that. I was just listening to um, a podcast, Diary of a CEO, he's my favourite podcast and um, you know, this gentleman was talking about awareness, awareness over discipline, consistency, all these things Absolutely. that everyone, you know, yeah. this productivity, everyone wants to go, oh, but it's a means to an end. And I'm going to do this because this is the outcome. But if you're not self-aware, you're actually never really evolving. Like nothing's ever changing. If you can slip into that slipstream of self-awareness, that is the point of change in your life and even if it's just being self-aware of a habit not just going I need to be productive and disciplined and consistent because habits are you know these natural things that we just get into so we don't have to think about but self-awareness is actually you know the, the biggest key and you know, with everything astrologically going on next year too, you know, a lot of people are going to be waking up from this very elusive Piscean soup. You know, there's a sobering going on at the moment, a yeah. spiritual sobering. For so many, there's still maybe, you know, the frog in the pot, as one of my other astrologers talked about. Um, you know, it's that the frog that, you know, it just boils and boils and boils and it doesn't know that it's going to die. Yeah. And that's what's happening because this Pisces energy that we've been in for so long is about to, we're going to be shot out of a fucking cannon. Let me just give you the hot tip. You know, it's all, all Aries stuff oh, coming in at you, yeah. you know, and so it's, it's a wake up. It's a collective awakening and that is painful. Mm. It's, um, it's so interesting because I really enjoy endings and beginnings because I feel like that's where we can make a difference but I understand that not everyone has that same comfort. And I feel like it's a year where um, we're going to be tested a lot on our integrity. And I find particularly nines, those old souls, they get put in positions where they rise to the top, but if they've done any cheating, manipulation, exploitation, it always comes out and it comes out like guts and all. And I I mean, we've experienced that expose energy stronger and stronger on the planet mm -hmm. recently, haven't we? It's 222 here, which I love because 222 is all about secrets coming out, relationship healing, <laughs> the rise of the goddess. But, yeah, I just feel like there's just more to come in terms of um, our understandings of who really, um, you know, rules the world and things like that. Mm -hmm. What other astrology tips do you have for us? Um, so, so, you know, I, I want to say that March is a really big month. Yeah. Um, we've got Neptune moving into Aries for the first time in our lives. So this is, wow. you know, 165 years. We're talking about uh, planets being in Pisces, the last sign of the zodiac, the death, the death portal, the womb. This is before birth. Aries is the first sign, the first step, the first breath. This is the new, and we have never seen Neptune wow. in Aries in our lifetime. So this is 165 years in the making. Mm -hmm. So it is big. That alone is is huge. But of course, March has to be eclipse season. So we are going to also well. <laughs> be experiencing our eclipses and We've got Venus and Mercury both retrograde okay. also okay. in March, both nearly hitting the same degree. So, again, there's this slowness. We're reassessing things. The mind has to, you know, retrogrades humble us. A lot of people don't like yeah. them or they say all these things about them, but it's like they are their own karmic lessons, you know. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden we've got uh, every planet, 
retrograde in, in 2025. We will experience every planet because we enter with Mars, which is the rarest planet. Uh, Venus is the next rarest planet. So now we've got Mars, which is action, masculine, yang, you know, the way we fight, the way we you know, like it is, uh, you know, I don't want to keep swearing, but, um, but you know, it's, it's this drive and motivation and passion. And then we've got Venus, which is the next rarest. She is around relationships, finances, desires, the wrath, you know, the feminine, the, the, the light feminine and the dark feminine, our usual Mercury retrogrades. And then of course, all of the outer planets, which always retrograde. So to have everything retrograde in a year, again, it's, again, it's showing us slow down, reassess, reintegrate, rework this, what, what you think life is and what, what it really is becoming. And so March is just, you know, a month to watch because of the eclipses, because of Neptune, because of the Mercury and Venus retrograde. I, um, I you know, and I, love yes. your, I love your passion. Look, what I'm getting, you know, when you say that, it's like launch because, you know, three is about the solar plexus and it's about go get it, just do it. The fire comes back into the belly. And I got this really strong image of, yeah, there's a launch but, you know, for example, if it was a hot air balloon, you, you just can't take the kitchen sink. You can really mm -hmm. just take yourself. Yeah. And I, love I, that. I feel like this year is very much a test. And I feel like we're going to have to leave a lot behind, which is, of course, that snake energy as well. I don't exactly. feel that it's, it's negative. I feel like it's no. cleansing. Hmm. Mm. And just because we talk about like it being a karmic year, a year of letting go and release, Again, that doesn't, uh, you know, as an astrologer, it's sort of hard times sometimes being an astrologer. It's intense. It's crazy. It's this, it's this. <laughs> but we are in, you know, the eye of the cosmic needle in the 2020s. 2025 is the halftime show and it is not disappointing. You know, you want to go to a halftime show, this one is massive fireworks, the wild, wild west. And when I say intense and wild, that can be liberating. That can be finally people being liberated and free and casting yeah. off the yeah. shadows and dropping the things too. You know, it's it all depends on the reflection of how you live your life. If you're living your life pushing shit under the rug, well, unfortunately, you're going to have a wake-up call. Like that's just yeah. reality. It's, right? a, it's like a rug it's... removal service coming to your door. <laughs> exactly. I mean, gosh, I've been like, oh, when I was travelling Australia, speaking at Mind Body Spirit Festivals a long time ago, yeah. I was Talk, so this was before 2020 like you know mid 20 2017 or whatever sure. i was talking about rugs then i'm like if you've got rugs and you're pushing shit under the rugs you're fucked like you know like you cannot keep living like this this is the truth that you know this is around the truth and the truth always rises and so some of these rugs are now mounds that people have been pushing things right. under and there is no room for that now collectively like the universe is just like this is it and next year is a real initiation into a reckoning on some level both collectively and on a on a you know smaller level for us um for sure. You know, we're seeing astrology, like I said, you know, that we haven't seen ever in our lives. Not only does Neptune move from its home sign of Pisces, the end of the Zodiac, mm -hmm. to the beginning of the Zodiac, but then it's got to go back again. So we're only getting, you know, we're getting a fairly big window from the 30th of March through till the 22nd of October. Right. Yeah. That's Neptune in Aries. So we're getting a very big chunk. But then back into back into Pisces, Saturn moves right. into Aries as well for the first time in 30 years. You know, this is happening in May. Uranus is moving into Gemini for the first wow. time in 84 years. You know, so many, we are having so many things. It's and that's the thing. And like, I mean, it's an astrologer's dream. I mean, I've been frothing <laughs> this shit for years. I'm happy for you. <laughs> I am frothing this. This is so good. But it is. It's it's everything all at once, and that's okay. that's the unique part of this. We don't often see all of these outer planets yeah. moving at the yeah. same time. You know, we're here in the precipice of Pluto finally in Aquarius, and where he has been back and forth for the past mm -hmm. near two years. And now, you know, going into 2025, we've got Pluto in Aquarius settling in. We've got the initiation and the prequel of Neptune in Aries, Saturn in Aries, and yeah. Uranus in Gemini. And when you go back in time to see what was happening the last time all of these planets were in these signs, it's it, it's it's big stuff, you know, like it's really big and they're all doing it at once. So, so the last time they were all in those signs, what were some of the things that you could think of? So Neptune and Aries, we had 1862 to 1875. We've got the Civil War. I just sort of even talk about like we've got Henry Ford, um, Thoreau, Richard Strauss, all born with Neptune and Aries. So, again, it's, yeah. it's quite, you know, interesting people being born there. Um, 
Alice in Wonderland was published the last time Neptune was in Aries. So we've I've got, got this real. I've got Lewis Carroll's birthday. That's cool. Oh, that is so cool. Um, what else have I got for? Oh, so so when it comes to Saturn in Aries, this is a very. I've got like a gazillion notes here because oh, this, is, it, this has it, been it, my it life. Okay, can I just because I I know for me my my little brain's just kind of like whoa. Um, yeah. I mean, when when you're talking, I always get like a lot of images and visuals and. I was getting a really deep sense of when you watch an orchestra and all the instruments join in and there's just this extraordinary mixture of all the different sounds, but there's just this perfection to it. That's it's you just absorbing the magnificence and it can mm. almost feel like too much. And it always ends, you know, this, mm. this year coming, it feels like all the instruments are playing in some ways. It almost feels a little bit overwhelming and at the same time, like find the music and the noise and and cultivate that quiet voice. I was going to say before we talked about the inner patience, I have a terrible joke, which is all good doctors need patience. Mm. But this doctor idea has been coming, coming up again in my readings, which is about healer, heal thyself. And it feels mm. like over the, the, the years, you know, since 2017, when this all started, we're still trying to fix everyone else. Mm. And I feel like that is being taken out of commission. In the next yeah. few years, you know, not just next year, but it just won't be rewarded the way it used to be because mm. it's um it's quite destructive actually. Because yeah. I mean, if you water someone else's tree and not your own, then they have to come and save you later on. And there's never this this kind of codependent, isn't it? Absolutely, mm. yeah. And I mean, and the, with the big shift of Saturn in Aries and Neptune in Aries, again, we're going from the last sign to the first sign. We're beginning. Aries rules the self, the identity. It it, it is about tending to the self, being your own saviour, being your own hero, saving yourself. Like this is what this is about. And a good teacher and leader will have already pointed you back to that. So if you're still codependent on these coaches, mentors or whatever they are, like this is, this is, this is dying. You know, this stuff is dying because you have everything you need within yourself, you know. You and might find that they become really busy or unavailable and then you really get to test the knowledge that supposedly, you know, you've been imparted. And this is this idea of meditation is great in a yoga class, but can you do it when there's gunfire? Exactly. Um, and it's really just like, yeah, pedal hitting the metal, isn't it, with your spiritual practices? It is. So and, what you've said yeah. so far is it's just a heck of a lot of retrogrades. And so I guess people need to temper their expectations. What's a good use of that retrograde energy? Literally slowing down. Yeah, it's it's a time of recessing and reworking everything. And they're very, they're deeply humbling retrogrades. They're, you know, we can't, you know, for planets to just continue to move forward, it's freight train energy. And ultimately, if someone's got all planets direct in their own chart, they're going to understand that freight train energy. It's like one stop after another, after another, after right. another. But to have planets retrograde in your own chart, it does. It helps you to integrate things. You can see bigger perspectives and bigger pictures around things instead of just, you know, it's similar to what you said around like it's sort of the spiritual jumping. I've got a book called Everyday Enlightenment. And for me, enlightenment is in the everyday, right? And so yeah. that's exactly what I've been teaching. It's very easy to go to a retreat or to go to a workshop or to go to Bali and yeah. change your name. Like that's that's nothing. <laughs> but when you come home and you've got to live reality, mm -hmm. like that's a whole different story. And so it is around implementing what you know and practicing it. No one wants to embody and integrate things because they're just after the next spiritual hit. Tell me something yeah. else I need to do. Tell me who I need to be. Tell me if this is my soulmate. Tell me what direction. And so everything is leading us back to ourselves. And so yeah. it's absolutely what you said there, you know, like how are you meditating in gunfire? Like I love that. That's so true because just to, know. just to be clear, I'm still advising that you move away from the gunfire. It's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't stay in it. But yeah. it's got to be said that meditation is a tool for those moments of crisis. Yeah. And it's yeah. useless if it can only be done under certain conditions. It's just exactly. not portable, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. How do you, you live your life? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Mm. I got mm. a very strong impression of this, um, you know, that idea of the Buddhist saying, if you want enlightenment, forgive your mother, mm. rather than, you know, I mean, just like chase the next supplement or something. So, mm. yeah, thank mm. you so much. What other hot tips do you have for astrology for next year that people can put in their calendars or get ready for or make the most of? 
Um, so, you know, the, the big things are as if you are an Aries sun and Aries rising and very early degrees, you want to look at your own chart. I mean, that is the way that I teach astrology is that it is on the micro. Like we, we, you know, is your collective consciousness contaminating or contributing? And by constantly pulling in from outside sources, we're not really getting to know who we are because we're watering other people's gardens, right? So knowing your own chart and where these things are happening, that's my first tip. Like if you're not knowing where it's happening, you're just ultimately caught up on bandwagons. Pluto's in Aquarius, Pluto's in Aquarius. But what does that mean for you? <laughs> yeah. It might not mean anything for you, you know, like it's, yes, it's going to mean something for you over two decades, but you might have no planets in Aquarius. What if, what if, you know, but you might have lots of planets in Aquarius. So because we're getting these initiations into this Aries archetype, yeah. you know, you do want to have a look if you are, if you are born that, that late March, your sun sign is at the early degrees of Aries and you're about to have Neptune and Saturn hit that. And so again, this is going to change things for you, right? Like just yeah. this, there is great change. And for me, I'm always about come back to your own chart, know what's going on in your chart so that you can navigate that with awareness, with conscious awareness, instead of being swept up because the big thing I've been telling people all year pretty much because I've been literally talking about 2025 all of 2024 because it's that big Yeah, um, is if you're not sovereign and grounded in who you are, yeah, you'll just be sort of swept up in 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 all of the, it's a bit, the it's stuff. A bit, it's a bit like that tidal wave of misinformation. You touched on that in my last chat with you for 2024 and we've really seen that happening and yeah. AI is just getting deeper and deeper and, of course, has lots of positive things but also We've just got a generation of children who don't know what real people look like. That's right. I mean, and yeah. and that's actually going to be amplified with Uranus moving into Gemini for the first time in 84 years. This is another air sign. We're moving into the era of air. We're talking, you know, mind manipulation. We're talking, you know, seeding people's minds. Again, like not knowing what people really look like, you know, like and and then people actually doing everything they can to their physical bodies to look like something that's not real yeah, too like the, sure. the mind is going through a very you know the the mental stuff is huge with Pluto in Aquarius and Uranus in Gemini like we're moving collectively and we're all going to feel this this is like a collective good point just yeah. to to share is that we're moving from all of these outer planets in yin signs earth water receptive feeling intuitive to masculine air and fire signs. This is dominant. This is action. This is transformation and motivation. Absolutely. But it's going to very, you're going to feel that significant shift from that yin energy to yeah. very dynamic energy. It's, it really sounds like global warming, honestly, because mm -hmm. I worked in the environmental movement. And sometimes when I say I'm a numerologist, people think I'm a meteorologist. <laughs> and they'll be like, is it true? Climate change, is it true? I'm like, well, fortunately, that was my previous career. <laughs> so um, I can answer that. And it is true. But mm. yes, no, that's so fascinating that astrology picks up all those themes. I'm also interested at the um, activation of people with Aries, of course, being the first sign and associated with number one. And of course, that will set us up for 2026. That's right. So just the universe is so organized. It's just absolutely preparing the courses before the people are hungry. And I love that <laughs> about this type of um, modality with astrology and numerology. It just takes away the sting. Not everything is personal. Well, nothing is, you know, I often say to my clients and to anyone who's listening to me, if you're taking astrology personally, you've missed the point. You know, that's not what we're talking archetypes. We're talking, you know, bigger things here than just, oh, your moon's in Aries, you know, like this is bigger than that. And, um, but in saying that, of course, we want to know in our own charts exactly what's going on and what's yeah. being activated and yeah. hit by all of these big movements. Because again, it's, where it's it's precipice energy that we're in in 2025 mm -hmm. it's not we're not there yet 2026 <clears throat> excuse me is when these planets shift into these signs and then stay there for long periods of Fascinating. time Fascinating. that's just perfect with the numerology exactly um, with the nine I've always said with the nine it really is that big head on a skinny body that doesn't like to exercise sometimes but you know, it's very much about the ultimate powers of the mind, the thinking, intention setting, visualization. And so those things are really useful during a time like this. You might find that people in some ways are losing their minds. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's even more important that you are very Hello, caring. Hello, Uranus and Gemini. Yeah, very caring with <laughs> yours. 
and um okay super interesting mm -hmm. any anything mm. else that you think would help for the people um oh there's i've got a i've got a whole book to tell you all the <laughs> things that will help um but september is also like a, a very karmic month as well because yeah. it's eclipse season and it's the ninth month in Sorry. a nine year yeah. so it's the only nine energy that we're getting so again those two eclipse seasons are very very interesting march and september so they're definitely mm -hmm. ones to is a really delicious sort of month. It's like a soup of mermaids. You and, can say that and that fate. month again. Sorry, the internet. February. Right. February. That's that's uh, twenty twenty five, right? Yeah, February 2025, which is obviously an 11, it's an 11 month um, month as well, but it's very synchronistic. We've got uh, the North Node in Pisces now and, and and we're swimming, you know, we're growing our mermaid's tails. And although it's an Aquarius season, it's going to feel very fluid and very Piscean, yeah. um, very fated. You know, I want to say that, yeah, that February through April is just like, wow, I, you know, how am I going to not just keep saying wow? Um, of course, September, like I said, the extra uh, eclipse mm -hmm. season August is a very interesting month as well. It's just, it's a big year. It is a big year. Yeah, it's so, a big so time. In a, in a way, people want to be prepared. They want to start like really thinking about the year now and at the same time have a lot of fluidity in how they're going to kind of enact it because mm. lots of things could pop up. But at the same time, having some level of trust that we are being prepared, we're not being punished. Mm. And it's um, I really love nine energy because it gets us over that finish line. So just any way you're prevaricating, procrastinating, keep going back to the toxic ex, whatever, I feel like next year gives you that power to say no and stick to it. And mm. just give yourself that second chance at a happy childhood and all the things you've always wanted. So mm. nine in tarot, you know, the nine of cups is the wish granted. Mm. And so I think there's a lot of peace coming in the next year. And especially for those people who don't um, buy into the noise and instead, like I said, listen out for the music and those quiet voices that are leading us to home. Mm. Um, so, yeah, what, what a... <laughs> Summary. I mean, you've really packed a lot in there. Great job, Tiani. <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah, I do my Ooh. best to get as much as I can in. But I feel like of course, I've just it's just the tip of the iceberg. Climbed a vertical cliff with you. Oh, you know, it's on the Great Wall of China or something. But so let's talk a little bit about this amazing upgrade that you've created called the 2025 Energy Survival Kit. I don't know if you can hold yours. I've got mine. Great. And so I've got my copy and you trying do. my best to get through it. I mean, there's so much in there. It's like Tiani on paper, really. Like the, <laughs> it yeah. is, it is. That's exactly what it is, right? It's so, me. Um, so ultimately it's a 200-page guide and it's a companion for the year and uh, all of the things that I've just spoken about, I go into depth obviously in, in here and you've got Oracle readings for the Mercury retrogrades, for the just, Venus you've retrograde. Covered, you've just sort of covered everything, haven't you? So, I do. Um, mm. Yeah, highly recommend that. I'll put a link and... Thanks, I babe. obviously run uh, my monthly uh, spiritual sessions in Patreon. I've got my 2025 forecast uh, now in January and February because that feels like the most important time to run it. I've mm. just um, pushed that back a little bit. But, yeah, look, I'm really grateful, Tiani, that you have come back to the planet. Thank you so much. I know you're a Master 33, the butterfly, so I have <laughs> this beautiful picture that I've stolen love it well enough appropriated from nasa <laughs> uh, to celebrate <laughs> you and i'm an 11 so together oh, we're 44 which is all about yeah. commitment yeah. and happiness and you oh. know eternal wisdom so look we really that. hope that you've enjoyed our chat and mm. please do follow both our work i will put everything below if you've got any questions for Tiani, um, she's easy to find. She's everywhere. <laughs> At least once a week, one of my clients is like, do you know Tiani? She's so amazing. I'm like, I am very lucky that she is in my BFF circle. So, yes. yeah, thanks, everyone, for your support. And Tiani, thank you for all that you represent because you're very pure and I love your authenticity. And I think most of all what I love is you're just bloody dedicated Every time, every time you do something, it's always 11 out of 10. It's just a very inspiring experience to be around you. So thank you so much. Thank any you. any parting words for our our people who are who are now all um, juiced and juiced up, yeah. juiced up. Well, a journey journey well. Be discerning heart you know just live from the heart. What are your priorities? You know, just stay really focused in 
you and and your kin and you know and what is really important because um it's going to be very very easily to get easy to get swept away in a lot of stuff over the coming time so it's it's about stripping back to simplicity absolutely so yeah Mm. watch your step and complete the marathon it's really everything Mm. is for you please don't be scared and if you feel that anxiety set in you know spend time with your healing communities because the nine energy does best when it's a small fish in a big pond, not a big fish in a small pond, you don't <laughs> want to be the smartest in the room in the next year because absolutely you will feel the pressure a little too much. So thank you, everyone. This has been Sarah from Sarayup.com. So grateful to be able to bring you hot tips for 2025's Astrology with Tiani. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. So and see you next time. Double peace signs always.